Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today we're talking more about warm-ups. So in our first video, we talked about something that you may or may not do, and that is self-myofascial release. Laying on a foam roller and grabbing a Theragun or, you know, pinning a lacrosse ball or uh, what's a field hockey ball in between your pec and your uh, wall nearby, or maybe the ground and your butt because you got some glute muscles that feel tight. That's step one, but you might not even use it. Step two is, hey, maybe you just need to move around a little bit. Maybe you need to roll on the ground. Maybe you need to walk around. Whatever it is that gets you kind of moving around and clears your mind, gets you in the, you know, the frame of mind for working out. Now today, step three, generally in this order is how I'm doing this. Step three is muscle activation. So, uh, you know, we kind of got away from calling it muscle activation because it seems like it's probably just me repositioning a muscle and then it's allowed to turn on a little bit better physiologically. Um, and so muscle activation seems a little unclear um, or a little, not necessarily unclear, but less specific, less accurate. I think talking about activating a muscle is a very good way of thinking about it. It makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. So some people, especially people who sit down all day at work and then they sit down and they drive into the gym and then they, you know, I don't know, hopefully don't sit down too much when they're at the gym, but <laughs> uh, they've been sitting a lot. And when I sit there and I put pressure on a muscle, it falls asleep. And I think that's a really good way to think about it. Um, let's, I don't have a coin. Here's my pen. Let's do this. So we did this experiment in my physiology class. We took this coin or this pen and we just put it on our arm and it stayed there. It stayed there. Yep. So we put it on our arm and we just held it there for a long time, for, you know, over a minute. And what you did was the tester checked in with you at like 15 seconds, at 30 seconds, at 60 seconds, at two minutes, at five minutes, whatever. And you were supposed to, sorry, I, I hit my mic down there. You were supposed to say, yes, I feel the pen still, or no, I do not feel the pen still. Let's, let's keep it right up there in there. So I was starting to not feel it, but when I moved it up, it started to move around. And so things started to change a little bit. And that gave me some signals that said, hey, there is something on there. So our nervous system is really good at detecting, especially our proprioceptors in our skin, is really good at detecting um, change. It's just like your, your vision, right? So if I just, have you ever found like, uh, where's Waldo or whatever? Where's Waldo works as a puzzle because it's all just right there. Nothing's moving. Nothing's drawing your attention. You're not looking for any one particular thing. You're just there. You're just, uh, you know, it's just the picture and you have to find Waldo and he kind of looks like everything else in the picture. Um, the uh, what our brains are good at doing is noticing the change noticing something really, really different. So if Waldo was dressed in all black in those pictures, we'd be able to find them probably pretty easily because all those other dudes in the red and white stripes are, you know, totally different than what Waldo looks like. So we notice differences, we notice changes. And so when I put a, a coin or a pen on my arm, I feel the pressure change on my skin. And so I'm very aware that it's there. And my skin proprioceptors keep sending these signals on and on and on. And eventually it starts to be like, OK, well, if you're not going to do anything about it, I don't need to keep telling you this because this is an expensive task. And what we say is that that sensory system accommodates. It stops feeling that sense. So. If we think about the coin being the chair and the arm skin being your butt, then when I sit down all day, I will get something that, you know, good marketers called gluteal amnesia, 
where my butt is just tired and it's forgetful and it doesn't know how to turn on at the right times and the right amount. And so I can benefit from some gluteal activation. The third part of our warm up. So I that was just, you know, that's something that I think people in our circle don't really think about that much, but that's a really good way to look at it. And, you know, sensory systems accommodate. That is definitely the case. And you'll definitely see progress if you activate your glutes before you start doing your split squats. I have a client who is now addicted to it and asking to do it right before her split squats because otherwise her quad burns so much because it has to work so hard. It's crazy. Even though her position is really good, her quad has to overwork because the glute isn't helping it. So in your warm up, you might want to do your due diligence and make sure that anything that might be sleeping is awake. 